Assalamualaikum and good day. Welcome to the segment of Standard Operating Procedure. Upon completing this lesson, you should be able to number one, define standard operating procedure. Number two, recognize the types of standard operating procedure. And number three, write a standard operating procedure based on the given format. Okay, what is Standard Operating Procedure, or SOP. Okay, so an SOP is actually a type of document that describes operation of a certain work, okay, so that the work will be done in a certain way. That is, everybody will do the work in the same way. So a standard operating procedure okay, is made up of compulsory instructions, okay, systems and procedures, or um, it's made up of steps okay, that people can follow in order to complete a work or an action in the same manner. So standard operating procedure should be available at the place of work, that is, where the work is to be performed. There should also be an original copy okay, kept in a secure place somewhere in the workplace. Who should write the SOP? So the SOP should be written by, number one, the actual person who will perform or who has performed the job. Number two, people who work together on the job. People like a group of engineers or technicians okay, working together uh, to complete a project. They can also write the SOP. Number three, uh, supervisors. And number four, safety and health officer. Okay, and last but not least, technical writers. So, in other words, the SOP can actually be written by individuals or a team of individuals, okay, a team that actually perform the job together. So, they will write the SOP together as a team. So, these are examples, okay, examples of um, standard operating procedures that are usually written. Who is the SOP for? So the SOP is useful for the person who will perform a particular job such as managers, engineers, planners, safety officers, etc. Okay, anybody who is performing the actual job, okay, they will need an SOP so that uh, the job will be completed, like I said previously, in the same manner. So let's go technical, people. So there are two types of SOP. So one is a technical SOP, which focuses on technical activities, okay, things like um, collecting, how to collect samples from the lab or how to fix an engine and there's also an administrative SOP okay which focuses on documentation and administrative processes right so we are obviously focusing on the technical SOP so here's the format of a technical SOP if you look at the slide uh, the format and length of SOP depends on the steps taken to describe the work pro uh, procedures. Okay, actually, um, there is no one specific format for SOP, okay? Uh, each format okay, uh, depends on each company, okay, what their needs, their objectives, okay, and um, their goal is. Right? But, however, the format that we are using is a general format, okay, format um, as a guideline to writing a technical SOP. So, the format can be a simple one page step or it can consist of a few pages okay depending on the length 
um, the procedures, okay, how long the procedure is. Uh, that's an SOP of uh, you know, how to operate. This is a sample of a technical SOP, a simple technical SOP format. So we shall uh, go through it section by section. Okay, first one, the first thing that you need to have okay, in, in, a, in an SOP is the reference number, the date and the page number. There. This is basically uh, the reference number is basically for filing and recording purposes. So the date refers to the date when the SOP is actually written. So, however, if you decided to revise the SOP and make changes, then you have to change the date as well. Okay, you have to change the date to the day um, the SOP is um, revised. <laughs> The page number has to be returned in sequence, right? I.e., page one, page two, and page three, etc., etc. Next is the title. The title of SOP should be written at the top page, uh, the top center of the page, as you can see on the slide. So it says that it should be preceded by the phrase "standard operating procedures." That means you know you have to start the title with the phrase standard operating procedure. For example, standard operating procedure of transferring liquid chemicals uh, or standard operating procedures of assembling the computer hardware. See, you must start the title with the phrase standard operating procedures of doing something, right? That's how you write the title of the SOP. The department or unit uh, basically it is the department or unit which is responsible for the SOP okay where the SOP is written for if you look at the example there okay this SOP has been written for which department or which unit right and um, for this one also it would be better if you uh, choose the same structure of um, language which means you know if it should be written like that this SOP has been written for which department okay the purpose of this SOP or the objective or the aim of the of this um, SOP right so how do you write that it should be written like that so this SOP tells how to safely use 50% acetone to prevent injury from the vapors. Right, so if you look at the examples given, you would notice that the phrase this SOP is followed by action verbs such as tells or explains, right? In the first example, it says this SOP tells you how to safely use 60% acetone. Uh, in the second example, right, this SOP explains how to prepare instructions. So, um, basically, right, when you're writing the purpose, right, you need to use action verbs like tells, explains, or this SOP instructs you how to do something, or this SOP teaches you how to do something. Uh, who can perform this SOP? So basically, um, you need to identify specific individuals, okay, um, or groups, right, that um, can perform the SOP. Okay, next one is PPE, or Personal Protective Equipment. Okay, so basically this consists of tools that you need to wear in order to make sure that um, you are protected when um, in the workplace. Okay, so what you need to do is just list down the, the equipment that you need to have, okay, before performing or while performing the job. Okay, tools are basically um, things that you need to use okay, to perform the job. It can be um, in the form of liquid, okay, chemicals, or it can be a solid form. And if uh, you're using tools like you know, machinery or saw, right, things that can actually be quite dangerous, then um, it would be better if... Um, you include the safety precautions okay on how to handle those kind of tools okay 
uh, reference materials, right? So this refers to any kinds of reading materials that you use while you are writing the SOP. Okay, it means like if you read materials from the internet, okay, refer to materials from the internet or from books, right? Doing do some research before you start writing your SOP, then that will be should be included under reference materials. All right, so the most important part of the SOP okay, is the procedures. Okay, so procedures are um, the steps, the steps that you need to uh, follow to perform the specific job. Um, there is actually no specific length um, for your SOP, right? So uh, the length of your SOP would depend on how long the steps are. Okay, if you have a long, um, if the procedure requires lots of steps, then your SOP will be longer. If not, then it will be just a, one, a simple one-page SOP. So there's no actually specific length for your SOP. So don't worry if your SOP is not as long as you know, any SOP that you have seen before. <coughs> so uh, basically, there are three formats okay, for writing the steps or the procedures of SOP. The first one is the flowchart. The second one is the graphic operating format. And uh, the third one is what they call the hierarchical steps operating procedure format. Okay, the first format is the flowchart. So this format is usually used when um, in procedures which involves decision making, such as a yes or no answer. For example, um, if you say you start the engine uh, for three seconds and then the next step is listen to any problematic sounds, right? And the next step is do you hear any problematic sounds? If the answer is yes, then you have to send the car to the workshop. If the answer is no, then you continue to the next step of testing, right? So in that type of... Um, step right where you have two different um, alternatives right uh, choices right you use the flowcharts format okay anyway so um, in the flowchart right each shapes would indicate different steps so um, <coughs> I suggest I suggest you go to the link the YouTube link right, and just learn about how to use flowcharts. The next one is the graphic operating procedure format. Okay. Uh, this format is basically used for pro, uh, processes or uh, procedures which involve different stages such as, you know, before, during, after, or you know stage one stage two stage three right so you use the graphic operating procedure formats for that one right just like um, if you look at the example there right that um, is a format which involves you know four stages okay format three is the hierarchical steps operating procedure formats so for this one um, you use this format for steps which involves lots of sub steps you know lots of smaller steps um, under the um, under the main steps then you use the hierarchical steps because it's, it goes according to hierarchy main step sub step sub step sub step that's the example there you can see there the main step and then sub step a sub step b Okay, so that's it. So thank you very much for watching. Uh -huh.